I thought the problem with string theory is that it can't really be tested with any sort of experiment within the real world. It remains a pure theory based entirely on mathematics. Sure. This isn't based on science, but belief. Excuse me? Do you want to go over this hypothesis or not? It has philosophical, spiritual, and physical implications. I I'm not saying it is fact, but from what I've garnered throughout my 60 or so years on this planet, dabbling with the building blocks of reality, I find it the most plausible explanation. Yeah. I will try to listen and keep an open mind. Thank you. Now, the basis for the following suppositions derived from a mathematical object referred to as the monster. <clears throat> it needs a minimum of 196,884 dimensions to exist. As well, it is part of a group in number theory that essentially composes all possible symmetries or, or math atoms, as I call them. If we can consider that the actual universe in which we live is a <clears throat> mathematical entity, then I believe the universe is but a physical manifestation of this object known as the monster. There are 26 math atoms and there are 26 dimensions needed to purport the environment for string theory to be an accurate description of reality, and I believe that these are one in the same. But let's back away from all that for a second, shall we? We need to now venture to a topic that I'm sure you will find the most difficult to accept, but I speak what I feel is the truth. There are three types of souls on this earth when it comes to spirituality, uh, the first type accepts the word of their chosen prophet and does not seek the truth for themselves. The second type does not take a prophet's word for it, but does not seek out the truth for themselves. They accept there is something out there, but do not go out of their way to find it. The third type not only sought the truth, but found something divine and then dissolve into nirvana or they return to the physical plane as a prophet to teach what lessons they learn. Are we talking about scientific truth? Or only in the spiritual sense? <laughs> Just listen, dear boy. You might be the second or third type of soul, but for the purpose of this conversation it would be helpful if you entertain what I'm sharing as though it were indisputably so. With that being said, let's jump in. According to both mysticism and Hinduism, there are seven significant chambers of the spirit and energy is constantly moving through these chambers in two alternating currents. One current of energy flows up from the darkness into eternal light and unity while the opposing current descends from the light into ever fracturing darkness and loneliness. In every moment, as individual spirits, we can choose which river of energy to participate in. Choosing love sends you on the path of ascension, while choosing fear propels descent. And to reach the bottom of the darkness, the, the pitch black cold pits of hell, is to meet a form of infinity. And after eons, this will mean your spirit will awaken at the tippy top of a larger infinity and resume the descent down through the chambers which are sometimes referred to as chakras. Likewise, if your spirit ascends to the seventh chamber, the bliss that is moksha, that that infinity will carry your spirit back to the darkness below the first chamber for your for your spirit's ascension to continue. You got all that? I think so. Okay, so back to the matter at hand. We have 26 dimensions, 26 math atoms, and seven chakras. We are going to assign three dimensions to each chakra, leaving five unaccounted for. Two of these are basic foundations, if you will. Their function is solely to create the environment in which everything else can exist and operate. They exist outside of the body, just like three other dimensions that our human minds are familiar with. Depth, width, and volume. What about time? 
if the five dimensions outside the body and the, and the mind are the, are the first, second, third, 25th, and 26th, then, then time is the 24th, and it acts as the meeting point of outer and inner space. It is the very top of the crown chakra, existing above the mind's physical form. The energy that is ascending will travel upward out of this chakra until falling in a curved manner after encountering the five bodiless dimensions. Energy will, will re-emerge in the fourth dimension at the bottom of your asshole in the root chakra. These three dimensions are your most unique, representing an individual's bodily existence, which in turn is a self-referential representation of all possible universes. Three dimensions that comprise the root chakra can be portrayed as your desire, your ego, and your, <clears throat> your bodily substance. As energy moves up through these dimensions, it finds the, the seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensions in the next chakra located around your belly button, representing the earth. And one of these dimensions is the Kundalini, a powerful life force that can be awakened. But, but we do not need to dwell on that too long now. The 10th, 11th, 12th dimensions can be found in the energy chamber located near your solar plexus. The name is fitting because it signifies the sun as a yellow circle. And as you follow along, it helps to think about each dimension as a puzzle for your consciousness to solve through meditation and other such practices. And the 13th dimension is holy, for it contains the heart cave where one's true self resides eternally. It shares the heart chakra with the 14th and 15th dimensions, representing the Milky Way galaxy. The throat chakra is then home to the 16th, 17th, and 18th dimensions and is representational of this iteration of the universe in which we both occupy this moment here and now. And then ascending to the seventh chakra on your forehead are the 19th, 20th, and 21st dimensions, a symbol for all possible universes throughout the infinite sea of existence, dreams, and possibility. And that 21st dimension is where the third eye is opened, revealing ultimate wisdom upon awakening. Above the head, residing solely in the astral plane, is the crown chakra, containing the 22nd dimension of absolute infinity, the 23rd dimension of transcendence, and finally, back to our 24th dimension, known to us as space-time, marking the separation of life and death the final two yin-yang dimensions that energy passes through before consciousness finds itself once again trapped in the first three dimensions that all minds find themselves in. Remember though, there is an alternate river of energy that goes down through the chambers, descending from the 24th dimension, collapsing to the bottom of your being, which, remember, begins in the fourth dimension found in the chakra located near the butthole. To cross over from this dimension to the third can be equated to death. Okay. And this is related to string theory? Yeah, so we can only experiment within the first three and the last three dimensions, and only one of those, time, is connected to our consciousness the way that the other 20 dimensions are. The reality is beyond the microscopic, much smaller than the realm of quarks. Time, space, gravity, all of these three things are required to conduct an objective experiment, but since experiencing these inner dimensions can vastly vary depending on the mind involved, it all comes down to belief, uh, unfortunately. And there is mathematical evidence to support all of this? Uh, well, sort of. So let's, uh, go out on a limb here and say I completely believe you. I'm on board. What next? Try to get to know your inner dimensions. And tell me if you don't start to recognize certain patterns. Like the universe is guiding you somewhere. Will do, Professor. Now where are you after this? 
Would you like to get a drink somewhere and cool off? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. Uh, first round's on me. He's fucking nuts. Yeah, I do.